Welcome to Pocus Geek. My name is Jared Marks. In this video, we're going to review long ultrasound findings in COVID patients. Keep in mind that this may not be present in your well appearing patients with COVID. This is found more often in those that are very ill uh, and have associated hypoxia. These are not um, specific findings to COVID, these are found in num a number of uh, lung pathologies. Um, but it's important to review how these develop. Um, this is addressed on other videos in this channel, but um, this will be going over the findings as they've been documented in the early literature of COVID. I want to take a chance just to review the normal anatomy of the lung so that you can get an idea if you haven't done this very much. But what you're going to have here is in white, you have your ribs. And associated with those will be rib shadows because the ultrasound beam cannot penetrate past those. And then you'll have your pleural line right here in purple. The pleural line is where you're really going to pay attention to. This is where your earliest findings will be and where you'll see the bee lines that then evolve to other things um, with worsening disease. Now in this video, in this image here we can see what are called A lines. They're re repetitive lines uh, on the ultrasound screen. It has to do with some uh, reverberation and they are can be normal. Uh, they can be increased in people with like COPD but not should not be an issue with your COVID patients regardless if they have COPD. So here is just a normal video, normal lung, and you can see right along that pleural line that was pointed out before, uh, it's shimmy, it's moving back and forth, um, and that it's very easy to see that here. So the first pathology you're going to start to see is B lines. B lines can be normal in well-appearing individuals or healthy individuals. With age, they can increase in, in number. number. Um, but you got to keep in mind that um, two to three B lines per rib space with contiguous rib spaces is more representative pathology. Um, here, this is a single B line uh, in one rib space, and then in the uh, second rib space, there's one, two. So technically, this would not necessarily be pathologic. You could rotate your probe uh, to match the rib space and see if you could explore nearby and see if there's other B lines that you could see. Um, but that's what a beeline is going to be, and it has to start at the pleural line. It has to project to the far field of the screen without losing intensity, and it will typically um, widen out as it goes to the far field. Another important thing to remember is that here, so again, we see our A lines, which I'm just going to draw right here. Here's an A line, here's an A line, and here's our regular pleural line. I want you to watch as the B line um, comes in that by definition a B line has to erase A lines and that's what's going to happen here. So if we see that those A lines are going to disappear as soon as that B line comes into view. There's several of them and they're almost contiguous with each other. So keep in mind that B lines are your earliest sign that you should see. Here's an example of B lines coming off the um, portion of the liver here. So this is your diaphragm right here and then these right here are B lines. Uh, coming off the lung as you're looking towards the medial portion of your patient um, and those are also representative B lines. If this was a motion video you could see those move back and forth likely as the patient breathes. Again here's another example of B lines. Now you'll start to notice that there's more and more B lines here and then they start to come together and to fuse and even to the point that you'll have it like this. Now I've had I've heard people describe this as a waterfall sign. Um, I personally don't typically use that, but this just looks like uh, confluent or fused B lines to me. Essentially a bunch of B lines that are becoming uh, one solid uh, thick B line. Here's another example and what I want you to pay attention to is that right over here, so we've had kind of these confluent B lines or B lines that are coming together, but right on this side of the video is you'll see that there's a drop off in the uh, the plural line doesn't continue and let me get rid of that here um, if you look right here I'm going to push pause for a second this is the plural line and it comes right here and then it drops off and then this area is what we call a subplural consolidation or it's an irregular uh, plural line and this will be the second finding that you'll you'll typically see so if you see that irregularity and that that's not a smooth plural line, that is um, our next sign that we're going to see here. So we're also going to see it here. It's very subtle in this one, but we can see right where the arrow is pointing that there's a subtle irregularity. And as we watch the video play, we should be able to see that even more. That that's not a nice smooth B line. So these are what are referred to as the subplural consolidations that many people describe. 
Here's another example. We can see the uh, plural line is right here, and then there's a drop off, and right here is where you, you can see that. So watch closely here as we go to the uh, video, and you can see that subplural consolidation. Same thing here again. Another example of a subplural consolidation, and typically you're going to have B lines around it, and they'll uh, become confluent or fused, and then progress to this. Here is a, another subplural consolidation where that irregular B line is progressed and starting to form air bronchograms, which would be your next finding. Here's another example of an air bronchogram. We can see all this hyperechoic area right here. That should be that's your plural line, and then you see it drop down, and this is where air still filling the lung enough to spread out the ultrasound beam, but this here is becoming consolidated lung. Uh, many people refer this to as hepatization of the lung in which it, it uh, starts to have more water content, content than air content. Here's a still image of the similar, another air bronchogram that you may see. Again, the same. Now this can progress to the point that it's a full consolidation and this is true hepatization in this. And what's important to note is that this is your diaphragm that comes like this. And over here, this is all liver and this is all lung. So let me get rid of that so you can see that they will look similar. And you got to just make sure that when you get closer to the diaphragm that you look at um, identifying the diaphragm and if you're above or below that diaphragm when you see it. Because as you can see in this, the lung and the liver can look uh, similar to each other. Now as the illness resolves, there's documentation that you start to have A lines come in. So as you can see here, this is back to the original image. But what we would expect to see if they're progressing or improving is the A lines start to develop. Now B lines will still erase those A lines, but that's a typical finding you should see. So keep in mind that when you're doing lung ultrasound for COVID, um, that you have your standard four anterior lateral views similar to the blue protocol or what was described in the international ultrasound guidelines uh, for the lung. I believe it was back in about 2012 or 2013 that they were re released. There's an additional zones. They've described five, uh, zone five and six. Um, reading the literature that I have, I would propose that you just do a uh, zone five here at the inferior posterior portion of the lung. This is gonna have a higher propensity early on for patients to show pathology and it will progress along the same lines that I just discussed in this video. Um, but do your anterior lateral views and then have them sit up or roll to the side if you can. Look posteriorly. Uh, additionally with this, uh, pleural fusions have been noted but not have not have been noted to not be large and not frequent. So keep that in mind as you're looking at them. They could still be present but um, not in the literature that's been described as, as being present frequently. I hope you found this video useful for using lung ultrasound in COVID. Please comment below with any of your experiences as far as lung ultrasound goes in COVID. This is a new experience for all of us and uh, learning together is the best way to move forward. Uh, take care and best of luck in treating these patients.